What's up YouTube? It's your boy Lopes and welcome back to another video. Today we'll be talking about top 5 power mods for your 10th gen Civic Si. Let's get into it. Coming in at number 5 will be a cold air intake. I personally have the PRL Motorsports intake and I think it's still one of my favorite mods. The cold air intake with the race map can give you anywhere between 15 to 20 horsepower and then 12 to 15 wheel torque. It's pretty crazy because coming from an NA car, you never get these gains from an intake. The only reason it came at number 5 is because the rest of the mods, I, I believe in my opinion, are way more important. A couple great intakes that you can get for yourself is PRL Motorsports and 27.1. They both make two extremely different type of intakes, but they both benefit greatly. I personally have the PRL Motorsports. I think it's still one of my favorite mods hands down. It just sounds so great. You get a nice whooshing sound. valve it gives you some gains especially with the race math and tuned another great thing about these intakes are you will see more gains at higher horsepower numbers so if you decide to build your motor and go big turbo you will see larger gains because of this giving the car cold air and cooler air will help the car produce more horsepower and keep it safer it's not going to overheat or anything and uh, by going with a cold air intake aside from a short ram you do that. The short ram is more cost efficient, but my advice is save up and get the cold air intake. If you are from Canada and you want the PRL cold air intake, what you'll need to know is you'll have to relocate your windshield washer reservoir. That is an extra additional cost but it is well worth it, I promise you. I have one on my car and I've had it for many years with zero complaints and I drive through winter, rainstorms, everything. I've never hydro locked once, knock on wood and hopefully it never happens. That is an intake I went with. That is number five. I'm extremely happy with it. I will link my videos down below on most of these mods because I do have most of them. So they are all coming from personal experience and uh, research I've done. So let's get into number four. Coming in at number four is a downpipe frontpipe combo. They can give you horsepower ranges between seven to 15 from what I read and what I've searched. And what is really good about them, you're opening up the cat, uh, you're opening up a bigger piping and you're allowing that air to escape from your motor and make more power easy. A couple companies I do recommend are PRL Motorsports 271. Map Performance and RV6. I personally have the PRL Motorsports. I've heard great things about all of them that I've listed down below. Also, um, you can get either catted or catless version. And once again, these are one of the products, the more power you make on one of your cars, the more it will allow air to escape and produce power. You don't want to restrict the motor. You want a free flowing system that will allow you to make bigger power, especially with our turbo cars. Depending on where you live, you may want a catted version. You don't make as much horsepower, but it's still a great upgrade. And I believe if you go catted, it's not as loud. Also, the catless downpipe definitely makes the car louder, but not in a horrible way. If you tune it just right with certain mods, it sounds just great. Go check out a couple of the sound clips of my car and you can see uh, I will be doing a full sound clip of the car professionally and uh, I'm just waiting for the right gear to come in so we can do that. Uh, I think I've achieved a very good sound for the tension Civic Si that is not super loud but not super quiet. I met somewhere in that middle ground that where cops don't bother me but it still has that aggressiveness that you want. That is number four. Let's get into number three and see what we got. Coming in at number three is an intercooler with charge pipes. Why I say that is because the OEM intercooler with charge pipes were more aligned with Honda's original OEM power goals and couldn't keep up once you started upgrading. It can drop your temperatures up to 50 plus degrees. These motors, especially the Type R's, tend to get hot um, by allowing more air in, you make more power. This intercooler and charge pipe is not so much of a huge power mod. Uh, what it's gonna also help you do is support your power mods that you have and allow your car to continue running and doing pulls, especially if you're at the track, consistently and giving your car colder air. You can definitely do some damage by overheating your car way, way too much, especially with the OEM intercooler and charge pipe. So I highly recommend you doing it. A couple of the main companies as we listed before is PRL Motorsports 271 
and map performance. Those are the three major ones that I personally like. There's definitely more out there, uh, but this is just my opinion on uh, the products that I've researched and I've seen people get. I personally have the PRL Motorsports with the charge pipes and they've been absolutely fantastic. After I got it, I definitely felt a nice higher end horsepower number. Felt like the power band was pushing me through, especially when we get to the higher RPM where the car seemed to die. It basically gave me the extra boost that I needed and pushed me a little harder in those higher RPMs, which made it definitely a really good difference. I put a number three because I feel like it's a really good mod that you should get, especially if you start upgrading, you start doing pulls, and you start really abusing the car. You need to make sure that your car is getting cool air and staying at basically safe temperatures. So that is number three. Let's get into number two. Number two is going to be an upgraded turbo. Why are you saying it didn't come at number one? Some of you may know, but if you don't know, you have to stick around and find out why I've rated this at number two and not number one. Why I put this at number two is because this is the best, best, power mod that you can get for your car. For me specifically, I have the 271W1 Turbo. My power goals were about 300. I am not dynoed yet, uh, but roughly from other people's builds, what I've seen, what I've researched, I'm anywhere between 280 and 300 wheel horsepower. The car's not a very heavy car, so the car definitely goes. A few great companies are 271 and Piero Motorsports. The 271 have two variants, a W1 and a W2. The W1 will get you to that around 280 to 300 horsepower mark, which I highly recommend because anything after 300 gets a little risky. A lot of these cars, especially our motor specifically, uh, I've noticed after 300 plus maybe 330 to 350, and over that, they, it gets a little risky and people do tend to blow the motors. With the W1, it can give you up to 42 wheel horsepower, which is insane for a drop-in turbo. Uh, I forgot maybe to mention that, that the W1 is an actual drop-in turbo and it's super easy to do. Uh, all these mods I've done myself, so I'll link them all down below so you can check the videos out and see for yourself. The W1 took us a couple hours and it wasn't that bad at all. What's cool about the W1, it's the same housing size, it's just the turbine is different. So the turbine basically allows more air to come in, push out, and make more power. The W2 that 271 produces can make up to 400 wheel horsepower. That is crazy. Just make sure you take precautions, especially with your blocks. You don't want to blow them. Do a lot of research before you decide to do a turbo upgrade. And uh, I suggest doing all these mods before getting your 271 turbo or PRL or whatever you want to do. Uh, but if you upgrade your turbo, definitely, definitely do research uh, because a lot of these motors can take abuse after like 300 plus. PRL Motorsports has a different variety of turbo kits that you can get. It's basically to what you want your power goal to be. I believe there's kits that go to five, 600 horsepower. You just make sure to do your research and know exactly what your power goals are and how safe you want to be. And if you don't care about blowing it and you're building a block, just go, you know, just go all out, just send it. That is number two, let's get to number one. So for number one, you're probably telling yourselves, how is it a turbo? Turbo makes the most power. My reasoning is without this mod, you couldn't do the turbo regardless. So the number one is K-Tuner or Honda. I'll specifically be talking about K-Tuner uh, because that is something I personally dealt with. And honestly, I've loved it ever since I got it. It was probably one of the first mods that I got. I went with K-Tuner V2 because it came with the screen and you can read a bunch of different parameters on it. I think that is very vital and very important because you can see what's happening with your car, your knock count, your intake temps, a whole bunch of things. You have to check it out, go through it, and you can see it all. That is one thing I really, really like over Honda. The maps do give you power as well. It increases your boost. The dual map is probably the most favorite and the best map that you can get off the shelf from it. It is 19.5 and 23 PSI when you're in sport mode. So honestly, it is a very, very good upgrade. When you do get it, it basically reduces throttle leg. It basically gives your car more of a sporty feel and it's much more enjoyable to drive it. If you even want to get something even better, uh, I would highly recommend the two-step performance map or the Farable map. That was a really good difference. I think they're about $90 US and by getting those, the car was a night and day difference. It drove so much better. The throttle leg was so, so much better. It was still there, but it did eliminate some. The best mod to eliminate completely 
is a clutch with a light and fly wheel that definitely eliminates it completely. These maps can give you a lot of power goals. They're all a little bit different, so you have to check them out and see what suits your need. I had the two-step performance one and it was great. A lot of people like the Faribel also. The Faribel came out after I got the two-step performance one, so I never went with it. And another really cool thing is if you do decide to go with the W1 Turbo, K-Tuner has an off the map shelf that you can run safely. I've been running it for months now. I'm still waiting on choosing a good tuner that I trust completely. If you do decide to get the W1 Turbo, you don't have to get a tune right away. You plug in your K-Tuner, you upload the map, and you're driving safely with more power. That is it for the top five power mods. I do have two other mods I would like to speak about just to give you guys a bit of information. Also, the next mod that I highly, 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 highly recommend is a clutch. After all these power mods, your clutch is going to go bye-bye, especially if you upgrade the turbo. Another mod that you should really consider, especially if you're going to do with all these power mods, is getting a clutch. I went with an ACT organic clutch with a light and flywheel. If you're looking to remove your throttle light completely, I highly suggest getting a light and flywheel. After I got mine, I eliminated it completely and I had no more throttle light. As soon as you blip the throttle, you see the response immediately. It takes a bit of getting used to, especially driving afterwards, because you're so used to that throttle leg. Another mod I would like to talk about is the turbo inlet. The only reason I never said anything in the top five mods is because, honestly, you only should get it if you have a turbo upgrade. If you don't, you'll get like two to three horsepower. It's cool to look at, but for what you pay for, it's not that great in horsepower to money ratio. If you have an upgraded turbo, you can make at least 14 wheel horsepower, 14 wheel torque, so it isn't bad. It basically will accumulate all your horsepower mods and help you get better airflow into the system. That is the top five power mods and a couple bonus mods. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, we're on the goal for 20K, so if we've reached that already, that is an amazing, amazing goal. We're hoping to get bigger and bigger and bigger. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you do it once, do it right. Peace out and later.